Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. Today we're reviewing the brand new GT Bicycles Power Performer BMX style electric bike. So let's get into the review. Before we get into the walk around, if you want to support what I'm doing here at eBike Escape, please consider subscribing as that helps me work with companies like GT Bicycles. I will also have a link to our electric bike accessories list as well as our top eBike brands page. If you make a purchase within those pages, it helps support eBike Escape. Thanks in advance. All right, with that, let's get into the walk around. Okay, let's get into the walk around and what better backdrop to have than a skate park in the background. All right, so let's start up here in the front. I think the first thing that you'll notice is these GT Smoothie tires. These are 29 inch tires by two and a half inch. So large tires, no tread, definitely a standout when you first see this bike. I immediately noticed these very unique tires. One other thing to note is these tires do have reflective sidewalls, so good from a visibility standpoint. And we have a rigid fork up front and just to note this is not a quick release so bolt on front skewer and we have 160 millimeter brake rotors and we have Tektro hydraulic disc brakes so plenty of stopping power there. Really like electric bikes that come with hydraulic brakes, definitely my preference. And the bike comes with both front and rear fenders. You can see the mounting points for the front fender there. And then it also has some adjustability here and attaches on the rear of the fork right there. And I'm gonna try to call out all of the accents that GT put on this bike. It is stylish. I think it looks really great. I love the green and peach or orange color. So first we have the GT branding on both sides of the outside of the fork. And then in the head tube, we have these teeth graphics, super unique looking. And of course, this comes with BMX handlebars, GT branded there, as well as here, attached to the stem. Moving on to the cockpit, first we have the matching grips. These are branded GT Bikes ribbed grips. Really gives you a retro feel when you're riding this bike. I don't know about you, but I had grips very similar, at least the rib style, when I was growing up as a kid. And then we have these Tektro brake levers. We have a left hand thumb throttle, it says good times throttle, and you can just tell that they put some quirkiness or uniqueness in some of the accents around this bike. And then we have a Bafang LCD screen, monochrome. So the middle button will power the bike on. And you can see that it shows battery percentage on the right, current speed, has a trip, as well as an odometer max speed, average speed, it gives an estimated range, 44 miles, and it does show calories as well as the time and the current wattage going to the motor, which is always handy. And then your plus and minus is going to control the pedal assist level. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you can go back down. So really simple display, but gives you all the information that you would want. Moving on to the right side, we have the micro shift advent shifter, and it's a trigger shifter, which is what I prefer. It's just a little bit more intuitive for me when I'm shifting up and down. Another area where you can see the branding is underneath the down tube. It says GT Power Performer, and you can see that this is also a camo design throughout the bike. As far as cable management goes, they have some cables coming in, nicely sealed here into the left side of the down tube. And then there are a couple cables that also come in on the right side of the down tube right there. And there is this GT top tube protector, I guess you would call it. You can see it says GT Huntington Beach, California. And this is attached via Velcro. And one thing to note is the bottle cage bosses are actually 
located right here. So you'd need to pull this off if you wanted to put a bottle cage on it. Moving on to the battery, I'm actually going to remove the battery. So it is lockable, comes off nice and easy. Towards the bottom here, we have a USB port if you want to recharge your phone. And the power performer is using a 36 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery, so 417 watt hours. And the battery also has a charging indicator at the front. So you can see the current battery charge. And it is nice that this has a little handle, makes it a little bit easier to carry. Beneath the battery, we have some more graphics going on. We have the power button, there's this person on a bike, and it has a plug as well. And some more branding here on the seat tube, as well as the collar for the seat post. And it does have a GT BMX seat. I find that this seat feels a little bit stiff, but it's staying true to their BMX roots, I guess. And it does say GT bikes on the back of the seat. So definitely a BMX style bike, but isn't going to provide a ton of comfort. And the seat post is not quick release, so you will need an Allen key in order to loosen that up and raise or lower that seat. Underneath the down tube is where all those cables come down for the rear brake, the shifter, and of course the power for the motor. And for cranks, we have GT Power Series branded cranks and of course matching pedals, plastic pedals that match the color scheme found on the rest of the bike. The kickstand is located to the rear of the left chainstay, so not going to have any issues with pedals coming in contact with the kickstand, feels very sturdy. And then of course we have those Tectral hydraulic disc brakes on the rear, as well as a rear fender that has mounting points on the frame here and here, and then as well to the frame from here down to here. The front chain ring is narrow wide, so less of a chance of the chain popping off. And we do have a chain guard on the right side. Here's a closer look at the Bafang 250 watt motor. I'll talk a little bit more about what this motor peaks at in my riding footage. And then we have the MicroShift Advent rear derailleur. I've been using this for a little bit now, and I think it is definitely adequate. And we have nine speeds back here as well. And there is a little bit more branding here. It says GT, but it's kind of disguised into the frame. And all of the graphics around the bike are also reflective. I noticed that the other day. Really stands out when the light hits it just right. All right, that completes the walk around. Now let's get to some first person riding footage. And then I will share some third person riding footage and give you my concluding thoughts on the GT Power Performer. Okay, let's get into some first person riding footage. I will do some throttle only. I will go in the various pedal assist modes and I'll also turn pedal assist mode off. So this is a class two electric bike. It'll get me up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle or with pedaling. And one thing to note with this throttle is it does not engage unless you're moving. Now you can take one pedal stroke or you can kind of kick yourself along. I'll show you that here. We have the speed on my phone here and should get us up to around 20 miles per hour. And I'll just kick myself a little bit, use that throttle, 11 miles per hour, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18. There's 20 miles per hour and actually the display is reading a little bit slower on the Bafang display. And I should note I have 61% battery. Okay, so now actually let's turn the pedal assist off and I will talk a little bit more about pedaling this with no power, which a lot of people ask about. And also if you are wondering, this app is the speedometer app by Cool Nix. And we're on a very flat road here and I have it in the highest gear. Working a little bit, I would say, going about 10 miles per hour. Can obviously shift down, make it a little bit easier on me. So one of those bikes that perfectly capable of riding flat ground with no pedal assist, but you're probably not going to want to take it up any significant hills. All right, now let's test out the various pedal assist levels. We usually ride in the highest gear, so I'll go up to the highest gear, go in pedal assist one, go 
I'm still going 14. I'm not working very hard, 14 miles an hour. So even though this is a, a 250 watt motor, still provides plenty of assist. You can see in pedal assist one, I'm still going 15, 16 right now. We'll go up a little bit, pedal assist two. 18 miles per hour, 17. So I'm getting much closer to the 20 miles per hour. And so let's go ahead and pedal assist three now. And I believe I'll hit the 20 miles per hour, we'll see. Still at 18, 19, and then pedal assist four. And five is going to get us to that 20 miles per hour. Let's do a max speed. I don't have the saddle in a position where I can pedal very conveniently. 21, and obviously the motor is stopping, helping me at 20 miles per hour, but. So yeah, if you really push on the pedals, 21, 22 miles per hour, maybe. Okay, so that's what the bike can do with pedal assist on flat ground. Now let's get to some footage where I take this up the very large hill in our city that I test out all of the electric bikes that I review on. Let's get to that footage. Okay, let's do the hill climb test. This is the same hill that I take up all the electric bikes that I review. And let's see how this does. I'm going to go throttle only here to start with. This is a 250 watt motor and I've seen it as high as I think 535 watts. Right now it's showing 500 watts. And unfortunately it's raining so I don't have my phone out with the GPS. But right now we're going about 14.7, 14.8 miles per hour. So 250 watt nominal or continuous 500 watt ish peak. Now, if you're going to be tackling a lot of hills, this isn't necessarily the electric bike that I would choose. And of course, pedaling goes a long way. Right now we're going seven miles per hour, really slowed down, five and a half. So this is more of a lifestyle bike, urban bike. It doesn't have a huge motor on it. That doesn't mean it still can't get up to speeds, but definitely not one that's going to climb large hills like this one extremely fast, like some of the other bikes I've tested. But we're still going six miles per hour, and uh, I think it is going to make it up. Holding steady at uh, 490 watts. All right, we made it. We're now going eight, nine miles per hour. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. 250 watt uh, nominal motor. Still can climb some pretty steep hills. I'm right around 145-ish pounds or so, just to give you an idea. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and then I will do the same hill with pedal assist just to give you an idea of how much easier it is, how much faster the bike will go up the hill. So let's do that next. All right, let's do the hill with some pedal assist. I do have my phone out now. Fortunately, it stopped raining. So we'll start off here in pedal assist two. And right now I'm in the highest gear. About 11, 12 miles per hour. All right, let's shift down just a little bit and let's go up with the pedal assist. Pedal assist three, using about 250 to 300 watts or so. And I'm not working too terribly hard. The steepness of the hill is not quite at its steepest point getting there. All right, let's go pedal assist four. 
Going about eight miles per hour. All right, let's go down to pedal assist five. Using about 450 watts now. And I can continue to shift down and make it easier. I wouldn't say I'm working too terribly hard right now. Still in a fairly high gear. Nine, 10 miles an hour. So yeah, pretty impressed. Not too bad for a 250 watt motor. You're not going to be zipping up any large hills, but with some power of your own, not bad, 10 miles an hour. And I am at about 65% battery it shows. Been riding this bike quite a bit the last few days. Of course I can shift down to first gear or second gear and make it really easy on myself. Okay, there we go, made it to the top. Awesome. Okay, now let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the GT Power Performer. All right, so what's the 411? Is the GT Power Performer da bomb? Is it all that in a bag of chips? Okay, sorry about the 90s slang. I just could not resist. The GT Power Performer is certainly not your kid's BMX bike or even the BMX bike you had as a kid. It does, however, resemble one and I view it as the bike that many of us wish we had when we were kids. It was hard not to feel nostalgic as I unwrapped this bike, reminiscing of the huffy bike that I had as a kid or the many times I found myself riding on the pegs of my friend's BMX bike. Lucky for us, there's literally an e-bike for anyone and the GT Power Performer certainly fills a void. It's a lifestyle bike, perhaps a little quirky in the e-bike space, and is priced at $2,225. The GT Power Performer isn't the most impressively specced e-bike for $2,000, but those buying this bike are getting it for the unique styling, retro feel, and the slick tires. Those are the main differentiators. I think GT nailed it with the aesthetics. This is the gloss military green camo, but it also comes in gloss, battleship gray and black, with hot pink and mint blue. The features bringing me back the most were the BMX handlebars, of course, the ribbed grips, seat, and of course that top tube protector. But it's got a little new school to it too with the 29 inch wheels and with those big tires and full size frame, you don't have to ride low unless you want to of course. I couldn't resist taking this bike to the local skate park ensuring no kids were around to embarrass myself in front of. Having never been in a bowl before, this was an absolute blast and I was surprised how much traction I had up the walls. Not that this e-bike is made for tricks per se, but it still felt at home. My wife even had a good laugh watching me cruise around in the bowl. Looking at the components of this bike, the Bafang 250 watt motor was surprisingly powerful and capable. It will suit most riders just fine as you saw in the riding footage. I enjoyed the hydraulic disc brakes and had no issues with the 9 speed shifter. So if you're a kid at heart, a true BMXer, wanting more speed, or just want to have a cool bike to cruise around with your kids, then check out the GT Power Performer. We had a blast testing this out, and it certainly is the coolest design e-bike we've tested out to date. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please check out the links in the description. We'll see you in the next video.